Okay, so good morning. It really is it's an honor for, for me to be here. I want to thank Dr. Fiorga for inviting me. As you mentioned, we met together probably 11 years ago in San Diego and Carl, and you came down to give a talk uh, in a program, Survivorship San Diego. Uh, and I'm really grateful for Sharon, Rendell, uh, Linda and Darren and everyone who's been, there's so much happening behind the scenes to make this happen and the, happening here and live stream. So again, I'm honored to be here. Welcome all of you and welcome to those who are watching uh, live stream. So I am a, a medical oncologist and really my interest in integrative oncology goes back to um, since even before medical school that I can remember. and. Um, this is a very emotional topic, and having those here present, who's been, those of you ladies who've been living with breast cancer, and who's been, been, who've been struggling through the day-to-day -day of what it is to live with cancer, you, you are an inspiration to us. Um, it's an honor to be with you, and there's nothing we can say except to share the things that we learn as doctors. And the best support and inspiration you get is from each other. So I know here in the audience, there are several of you who've been living with advanced breast cancer, and one will be speaking uh, later. But when you've been through it, and you know what it is to live through metastatic cancer, uh, you, can be, you can have the perfect words of wisdom to share. So I'm humbled to be here sharing my experience as a physician. Um, I've learned so much from the patients over the decades. Um, and in my over 25 years as a medical oncologist, I think that the, my best teachers were the patients. Um, so there's, there's a lot to share here in, in these 45 minutes. So you'll see that we'll go through some of the slides fairly quickly, fortunately. It's not only live stream, but it's recorded, so you can go back and look at it again and look at some of these slides. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of information, and um, integrative oncology is usually a talk that goes for uh, over two hours to talk about the data and the information of all the things we want to say. So um, we want to talk about, very briefly, evolving medical treatments in cancer, uh, because there are other conferences that really go over, explaining over hours all the amazing advances in, in medicine. Explain the importance and benefits of integrative oncology, complementary modalities that can improve the quality of life for people with cancer, and there are several articles that will be shared. An empowering way to look at cancer and its treatment, and Dr. Virga already has talked about ways to feel empowered. And for patients and caregivers, the importance of taking care of self. Um, so, very briefly, when we talk about integrated medicine, it's an emerging medical specialty that incorporates the art and science of caring for the whole person, body, mind, spirit, to prevent and treat disease, empowering patients to create a condition of optimal health, wellness, and healing, incorporating evidence-based and also uh, modalities that are proven and work that, you know, we're still doing a lot of research on many of them, natural therapies, complementary healing disciplines and modalities in the care of patients and caregivers, and very importantly, the safety and efficacy of these therapies. So this is a definition that I've liked over the years, is bringing together the best that medicine and science have to offer with the riches of nature, wisdom of the human body, the best in natural, complementary, multidisciplinary, and multidimensional approaches, the power, the strength of social interactions, and the power of the human spirit to heal the whole person in an optimal healing environment. So very briefly, when we talk about cancer, there's so many different definitions that can be given, but just a simple way to look at it is, these are cells that are immature, cells that have lost their purpose, um, and you know we'll talk about it later, but some people even, I've had teachers, who said, I'm going to teach my cancer cells to become mature again. Uh, they're immature cells, I'm just going to teach them to become normal again. Um, this, that's a very, very uh, healthy um, and a good way of looking at things. Why does cancer occur? We know there is a genetic predisposition. There are cancer genes that are overexpressed or tumor suppressor genes that are underexpressed or downregulated. 
their epigenetic factors, which is a very important concept I'll briefly talk about. It. And then random mutations. I'll show a recent article. We know there are high risk factors, environmental factors, and nutritional factors, and lifestyle. But there's this very interesting article that came in the Journal of Science and just came out last month. And this group, including Dr. Bert Goldstein, who's a very well known oncologist, they had an article two years ago that caused some confusion and, and conflict. But this one, I would say, I, I wouldn't say to read the whole article, but if you just Google or search random mutation in cancer, NPR, National Public Radio, there's a very good explanation about this article. And it really talks about a, a large percent of cancers are just from random mutation. There are no environmental factors, no genetic predisposition, but it's just a random mutation. We're talking about a high percent that are just, they call it like a bad luck mutation. Um, so this is very important for us to know that cancer can occur, we can do everything right, and we know a lot of people, a lot of healers, that do everything right and they still get cancer. And many of you are doing amazing things. You're doing all these things to take care of yourself and still cancer comes and goes. So there's something about this random mutation that is very interesting to look at. Um, so advances in medicine, improved medicine. So I put here healing medicine because this is another visual I humbly recommend because I've learned it from patients. Someone goes in, for chemotherapy, is to see chemo as part of their healing journey, to look at it as healing medicine. We know they're strong, they cause side effects, but it will be helpful if we can see the chemo as part of our healing journey and have that vision. Instead of thinking, well, I'm taking these toxins or poisons, that, that, those are words that just don't help. And unfortunately, unfortunately, in the medical system, that's also used, those words. Um, so we want to stay away from that and look at these are strong medicines. Even some herbs are very strong and people get sick from natural herbs. So it's just a good thing to know that chemotherapy, we want to, if we need the chemotherapy to embrace it as, he, as part of a healing journey. Motel clone antibody, many of you are aware of trastuzumab and pertuzumab with the HER2 positive breast cancer, uh, then the TDM1. Um, these are for breast cancer. HER2 positive. I put this medicine, nivolumab, it's an anti PD1 antibody because it's used for several cancers, uh, including lung, head and neck, uh, renal, melanoma, and it's one of these evolving medicines that are seem to be used now for more and more cancers. Targeted therapies like lapatinib, palmociclib, and debrolimus. I put imatinib, which is the first pill that cured chronic myelogenous leukemia. So it was, it was a miracle pill that came out almost 20 years ago. Uh, Niloxidib that is used for CML, but also you may have read that there is done research to see if it, it was used in Parkinson's disease, which is very interesting. There's, of course, more research needed. Olaparib for ovarian cancer. Then anti-angiogenic agents like Avastin, which is a VEGF receptor inhibitor, thalidomide, relevant use for myeloma immunotherapy and then vaccines. So all this is really evolving. There's a lot of new research uh, continuing to evolve in immunotherapy and vaccines. Um, now we know unfortunately chemotherapy has all these side effects that you're very familiar with. Uh, gastrointestinal side effects, or organ props, side effects, neuropathy, hair and loss, bone marrow suppression, and very importantly, that intimacy is affected. So hopefully, we're looking forward to medicine and science to continue to evolve, evolve where we can be using medicines that would have much less or none of these side effects. That's what we're all looking forward to. Advances in symptom management, which is so important, those that work on symptom and palliative care teams that are helping patients. Because when we talk about healing, when we talk about integrative medicine, oncology, when we talk about meditating, it's hard to do med meditate if someone is in pain. So we do have to take care of those symptoms. If it's pain or nausea, vomiting, dizziness, weakness, uh, low appetite, problem sleeping, we have to take care of those symptoms. Apoptotic compounds are any agent that can have these cancer cells going to natural cell death, which is called apoptosis. Stem cell, and then microbiome is a whole 90 minute presentation, but I just want to mention it here. Rob Knight is one of them. Dr. Rob Knight gave a very good TED 
presentation. You can find that online. Talk about microbiome. And there's so much research going on in microbiome and cancer that we still don't have answers. We do have for other conditions. But this is something you're going to be hearing about more and more over the next several years. Molecular profiling and genomic medicine, which is so important and advancing so much. That's, of course, a separate lecture. And then epigenetics, we all have genes. But what will turn on and off or upregulate or downregulate these genes? Uh, we see, for example, in this slide, we have um, 20, approximately 25,000 genes, all of us. So what will make these genes um, upregulate, turn on, which one will make them turn off or downregulate? Um, and that's what is studied of epigenetics. So a lot of medicines do this, but also many of the integrated healing modalities will turn on protective, protective genes. So I do want to go back to this article, role of microbiome. We know that the microbiome is basically bacteria or any microorganism that is in our body, which is a lot. We're talking about billions and billions of cells. Um, and it's... Um, it, we know that for gastrointestinal cancers, the microbiome is important, but this study in the World Journal of Clinical Oncology looked at microbiome in non-gastrointestinal cancers. So there's more and more research, as I said before, and we'll be hearing more about this. Epigenetic, all these different things will regulate the genes, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, okay, so uh, integrated oncology is an evolving specialty. In oncology, there is an established society of integrated oncology. Um, it's patient-centered, focuses on health, wellness, and supporting the healing journey of cancer patients, very much desired and requested by patients, family members, cancer center staff, and society at large. It also cares for the caregivers, nurses, doctors, and all staff, maintaining an optimal healing environment for the patients, their loved ones, and those in the medical system. There are several integrated oncology programs in large cancer centers that there's at UCLA, UCSF, and the Anderson, Sloan Kettering in New York, Dana Farber in Boston, and, and many more. So this is really evolving. Uh, and I know in, um, here at Long Beach, there's, there's a program that continues to evolve, evolve. So throughout, fortunately, throughout the country, there are more and more programs evolving in cancer centers. So here's a slide on the Society of Integrated Oncology. If anybody is interested, you can take a look at this website. Um, there's also a, uh, the benefits is when we can apply some of these things we'll, what we're talking about. There are less symptoms from cancer and its treatments, fewer visits to the doctor, decrease in hospitalization, reduction of healthcare costs, improving the quality of life of cancer patients and their caregivers, very important for those caregivers who are here or who are listening online. Supporting the medical team and environment education and research. So this, very briefly, this is a slide I got from a colleague, a professor at UCSD. Uh, when one looks at a literature search in, in, in integrative medicine, um, they, there are approximately 4,000 studies on meditation. There are 3,700 3, on yoga, herbal medicine, 31,000, massage, 12,000 and 25,000 on acupuncture. These are all studies that are done in respectable uh, journals. But if we look at a com any combination of these, they're really, if we want to see a, a study, um, meditation, yoga, herbal medicine, massage, and acupuncture together, there really are no studies. So this is, a lot of us are very interested and, and personally, this is one thing I want to spend more time in is to look at these research specifically for cancer. So I'm having trouble there with a pointer for some reason. I don't know if it's low on battery or... Um, so this is a study uh, from the journal National Cancer Institute, effective effects of integrative medicine on pain and anxiety in oncology in patients. So there are 1,800 patients that were treated Three different modalities. There was body work like massage and craniosacral. There was meditation and energy work, and there's also Chinese medicine. And they saw that these modalities, and in patients, oncology patients, uh, there was a 46 percent redu reduction in pain and 56 percent reduction uh, in anxiety. This is a very good book. 
on any rate of oncology, and there are hundreds and hundreds of articles, well-respected articles, that talk about these different modalities. And it's a great book uh, that I think if, if anyone is interested, especially for those who are in the medical system, to take a look at it. So integration, it really is, Dr. Virga was saying, it's patient-centered, it's, it's empowering the patient. You talked very nicely, or, uh, Marius, about COVID. Uh Giving people a menu of options. It really is a teamwork, it's all of us working together. The nurses, doctors, with the practitioners of, of the different healing arts that we'll be talking about. And it's about education and research. So integrated healing tradition goes back to Hippocrates, which is, 2,400 years ago, Ayurvedic medicine, which is an ancient medicine from the India that, um, for those who have heard about it, it's an amazing, uh, wise therapy, Ayurveda medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Native American medicine. There are many other ancient healing traditions, and osteopathic medicine, and naturopathic medicine, so for all of us to be working together, it's, it really is an, an honor and, and the best for the patient. So healing doesn't mean the damage never existed, it means the damage no longer controls our lives. I put this to honor the Native American medicine and the great wisdom that they impart. So integrated care and oncology, I mentioned before, priority is symptom management, good rest and sleep, optimizing nutrition, stress management, detoxifying our life in every sense, including toxic relationships that we and, and um, friendships that we may have, feeling in control and empowered. It's all about balance, homeostasis, and, homeostasis and self-regulation, and following the wisdom of these healing traditions. So, um, our father in medicine said, let food be thy medicine, thy medicine shall be thy food. And if we can keep this in mind, it will be very, very important. Um, so, just one slide on nutrition. Um, I need Darren's help here. Okay, so food as medicine is, there's so much that can be said about nutrition and I, it, it, I don't want any, there to be any misconception here uh, because it, it would take a long time to discuss. But when you hear about whole foods, plant-based and organic as much as possible, and that is, thank you, and that is so critical and important. And, you know, moderation of animal protein and, uh, and fat. Reducing, uh, probably the most important thing is reducing the intake of processed foods. And so many times, because of lack of time, we just eat these foods that are packaged and uh, lack a lot of natural uh, ingredients. And um, so, but the, the other important thing is that there should be no extremes. Uh, it's all about balance, and it really is embracing, thank you very much, Sharon. It's embracing craving. So if someone says, you know, I really would like to have a hamburger, I really would like to have a piece of chocolate cake, of course, th that, that's what we really we want to have. Everything in balance. And the program should be individualized and customized. Every person is different. So we can't say this is for everyone to eat only plant-based or everyone to only eat vegetarian because some people need animal protein, some people need animal fat. So that's where it's so helpful to have a team that can work with a cancer patient who's going through chemotherapy and going through all these treatments. So nutrition is very important and there needs to be a, a team supporting us through that. The other thing is conscious and mindful eating in relaxed environments, sitting, sitting quietly before an afternoon meal, and then the blessing of the food, the source, those who prepared it, and the company we are in. So, um, okay. So, botanicals, this is also would take us a long time. So, I just want to simplify some of these botanicals. There are too many to count, there are some potential risks and side effects. And some may counteract with medicine. So that's why you'll hear the oncologist say, don't take any supplements when you're, they're, you're on chemotherapy. And they're correct because we don't know what you're on. But if you're followed by a naturopathic doctor or an herbalist or someone who knows how to handle a person who is on chemotherapy, there are some herbs that can be actually very helpful. So in general, we want to avoid any potent antioxidant while someone is on chemotherapy and radiation. But that's why it's good to work 
with someone who has this experience. And I like to work with naturopathic doctors, herbalists, Chinese medicine, and Ayurvedic practitioners. So these herbs can be very powerful, antioxidant, inflammatory, antiplastic, so herbal medicine is a specialty. <coughs> Curcumin is one of them, curcumin and turmeric. So you may have heard of this. Uh, you know, it comes from the root of uh, curcuma longa. It's a member of the ginger family, widely used over the centuries. It's a very potent anti-inflammatory, has anti androgenic effect, antioxidant effect. Uh, so what's beautiful about this is when we look at medicine, we look at these different pills, substances, or uh, agents that work on one target in the cell, but something like curcumin, is multi-targeted, so it works on cells and, and all these different receptors. Uh, so this is what's very exciting and also complicated to do research. So when they did clinical trials, MD Anderson and other places have done great clinical trials. Um, they, these were the doses between 500 milligrams and 10 grams should be taken with black pepper. There are human studies done with cancer prevention, cancer treatment combined with chemo and radiation oncology. Now, they're very potent, so they can counteract with the medicines that one is taking. But the challenge is, as you mentioned a little bit, there is no, there are very little funds to do studies for the things that Dr. Virgo was talking about, but also to look at studying with curcumin. There's a little funding. Uh, but hopefully, again, we keep evolving in society and we can start putting funds into doing some amazing research with some of these natural products and integrated modalities and psychosocial oncology. So, in general, very quickly, probiotics, of course, if someone is on chemo or is immunosuppressed, we have to be careful with probiotics, but part of the microbiome is taking healthy probiotics, if it's pills, if it's yogurt, Greek yogurt, those have very important bacteria that once we're off the, the immunosuppressed uh, period, through, um, it's important to look at this. There are Ayurvedic birds, Chinese herbs, aloe vera, tea tree oil for nail changes. If someone is on taxotere, for example, they have nail changes just using tea tree oil. Treatment of mouth sores with lysine and glutamine, ginger for nausea, vomiting, uh, and just gastrointestinal problems. Ginger is a, a perfect uh, adjunct to be used. And a lot, I heard learned this from patients and nurses uh, because it's, it's just such an important thing. Alpha lipoic acid prevent and treat neuropathy uh, for altered taste. I heard from a Ayurvedic master using a combination of ginger, honey, lemon, and black salt, how that can help for altered taste. Um, vitamin D, melatonin, homeopathy, many others. This is just a brief summary. And otherwise, we could just stay all day and we can continue talking about these wonderful things. So, um, complementary mortality, lifestyle changes, gentle and aerobic exercise, yoga. If you think about yoga as not only a posture, but it's a whole discipline for any of you who are yoga instructors. It really is about the whole lifestyle. Um, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, massage, aromatherapy. So let me look at, um, show you a few articles. This, these articles are in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Okay, so this is the Bible of oncologists medical oncologist, surgical, and radiation oncologist. So in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, there have been some very good um, articles. Here it talks about randomized trial of yoga in women with breast cancer and ongoing radiation, and it showed a significantly improved quality of life and physiological changes, and these had long-term durability. Um, then yoga impact on inflammation, mood and fatigue in breast cancer survivors. 200 breast cancer survivors, they looked at inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor, and they saw that not only, of course, it was improvement in mood and fatigue, but that these inflammatory markers decreased uh, with yoga. So this is a very important study to share with, which I share with my colleagues, medical oncologists, when I give lectures. So, um, okay, so, that's on my next only feels better. Okay, so this is a, a mammoth in early acupuncture. Um, and this was a scroll that was found in China uh, that I'm sharing here. Uh, so acupuncture, for those who had the chance of experiencing it, it's a whole system approach, body, mind, and energy. And there are acupuncture points and meridians. Um, and it looks at the chi, which is vital energy. There's extensive scientific uh, literature improves symptoms caused by cancer, decreases side effects, enhances therapeutic effects of medical treatments, recovery, restoring of health, immunity, and well-being. 
Um, okay, so it's used, acupuncture for cancer is used for pain management, dry mouth, uh, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, weight loss, place of motor symptoms, hot flashes. Sometimes we're going to see a study that is as effective or sometimes better than the medicines for hot flashes. Neuropathy, fatigue, neuropathy, fatigue, stress, fear, anxiety, and regulating body function. So it's about finding the, the practitioner. We're going to talk about the importance of finding the right practitioner. So again, in the Bible of Oncology, General Clinic Oncology, acupuncture is an integrated approach for the treatment of hot flashes in women with breast cancer. Um, and then for cancer-related fatigue in patients with breast cancer, 300 patients were looked at, uh, and the, it was a very effective intervention. Um, pain and dysfunction after head and neck surgery. Randomized blinded uh, control of acupuncture for uh, aromatase and hydra associated joint symptoms, the, the joint aches that happen with AIs. Uh, this is acupuncture, so significant improvement. And basal motor symptoms, as here, compared it to Effexor, and it was as effective. Um, so, acupuncture for nausea and vomiting, et cetera, et cetera. So, these are just a few of studies in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Massage. Okay, we know how massage makes us feel, and some oncologists are, are care of the, when patients ask, well, can I have a massage? And say, well, we, no, because of this and that. So it's, again, in the right hands, a masseuse who has special training and they, they have experience dealing with metastatic cancer patients, then it's always going to be safe. It's going to be very gentle, it's going to be healing, produce endorphins. So um, there are special awareness, risk of infections, of clots, fractures, skin sensitivity, etc. Uh, massage can be amazing for lymphedema. As many of you have had that experience uh, having massage for lymphedema. But again, it requires uh, special training. So it's not only safe, but I would say indicated. Um, so this is a, a slide I don't have to get into. We have Dr. Birga talked about it, but our, our dear Carl Simonton and so many others, uh, Dr. Birga, Paul Brenner, and San Diego, David Spiegel, that you mentioned. Focusing on caregiver and caregivers to children, social service psychologists, and there is an American Psychosocial Oncology Society. Uh, that's something you can look up at as well, APOS, um, which also has their uh, conferences. But probably, if anything, the psychosocial oncology, I think, not that Marius is here, but I, I really believe in, in our cancer center, we had an amazing team as well, is so important because there's nothing we can tell people uh, when they're in that state of fear. Uh, nothing a doctor can say, nothing, except for the nurses or the healers in the world. Nurses can always give words of wisdom. But having a systematic approach uh, is so, so important. So, empowerment techniques, when we look at visualization, contemplation, guided imagery, mindfulness, and meditation, this is also very, very powerful. And I highly recommend it to all patients to do some form of mind-body technique, whatever they believe in, if it's visualization, mindfulness, meditation, prayer. And there are uh, techniques that can be taught. So in general clinical oncology, there's a study looking at mindfulness-based stress reduction in breast cancer survivors, and it significantly improved the raw, broad range of symptoms in these 320 ladies that were looked at. Mindfulness-based stress reduction in stage zero to three breast cancer, uh, and it also improved mood, rest and energy relate, related quality of life and well-being. So mindfulness and, and different forms of meditation can be very, very helpful. Intensive meditation training, and then there is something about telomerase activity, and they looked at this study that telomerase activity is part of the chromosome, the telomeres. When we age, the telomeres get shorter the con in the um, genes. So doing meditation, they found that these telomeres enlarge, and there's an increased telomerase and enlargement of these chromosomes, the telomeres, the end of the chromosome, which is a signal of health and youth. So there's something about the research, the research in meditation is really exciting. So biofield therapies, healing touch, therapeutic touch, hands-on healing, Reiki, Qigong, they have different names. Uh, it, we used to call it energy medicine, now it's scientifically we call it biofuel therapy because there's so much research. Uh, we published uh, a whole journal 
uh, with a lot of different information. This was a large group of scientists and physicians and practitioners who wrote several articles on the biofield science of healing and immediate emerging frontier in medicine. So it's very exciting what's happening in energy medicine. Uh, so I don't know if any of you have had any experience with any of these healing modalities. So some pra if you have the opportunity of meeting an amazing practitioner, uh, it really can help a lot. So then physical therapy is so important. We have a, we're going to hear about a physical therapist later who will share their experience, rehabilitation medicine, art therapy, pet therapy, music therapy, laughter, humor, journaling, the importance of quality of life, spirituality, cancer, and the power of prayer. So this is um, at our cancer center, and we have Alessandra doing the, the art therapy with these wonderful ladies. These are the prayer flags, flags called Hope Made Visible. Now they're up to 1,200 flags, and it's actually uh, from our nonprofit, but it became international, so these flags go through different cities and countries. Okay, um, so here are the flags, and forward, going forward. Okay, artful bra. So <laughs> this is a very, for, I mean, for me, every time I show this slide, it also um, it brings tears to my eyes. There's women who have had mastectomy. For them to honor themselves doing a, an artful bra, bra approach project um, and creating these um, purses also with bra. And these were shown at several, at the center and several other places in San Diego, and actually it's expanding through other places. There's a wonderful and very emotional way of honoring what ladies go through when they have mastectomies. So this is a journal, art with journaling. So journal clinic oncology, the effect of music therapy and ambulatory breast surgery. Of course, we know this is going to help, but it's good to put it in and have it in the, one of the basically the most respected journal in oncology. Then Dr. Larry Dossie, who, um, if you ever see him online or see him in person, incredible speaker when he talks about so many things, but he's written many books, and one of them was The Power of Prayer and the Practice of Medicine. So I've had this in my uh, exam room always. And our dear Mother Teresa, basically, uh, Mother Teresa, meditation on spiritual life for people of all faith. And that's what we, those of us working in, in medicine, we work with people of, of all beliefs and faith. Okay, so, um, here I have this, the blessing of water, food, medicine, supplements, chemotherapy, radiation. So this is just a reminder, and, so, and all healing traditions, in ancient human tradition, it was the two parts of blessing. And that's something, a reminder for myself and for us. You know, it's a silent blessing, so when with our, with our family, with our kids, we just silently bless the water, the food, um, the earth, the supplements, the medicines that we're taking. So, moving on. How do these modalities work? And it's usually a com one or a combination of, and so all the modalities we talked about, they work because they're, they modulate the immune system, they're anti-inflammatory, endorphin producing, hormone regulating, antioxidants induce natural cell death, anti-angiogenesis, it says epigenetic effect, restore balance, all this synergy with medicine. That's what complementary and integrative medicine is, really working together with medicine. Um, and when I, I've had colleagues who said, well, I heard a patient had acupuncture and they had all these side effects. And I say, yeah, I've heard patients who had surgery and had a lot of side effects and had chemotherapy and had a lot of side effects. So it really is a lot of factors. Many are practitioner dependent, like the surgeon, you need to have a good surgeon. But sometimes complications happen, even in the best hands. So it's so important to, when we're working with a team of integrated practitioners, to have these great people, but more importantly, with their heart and their intention is there to help. They're never going to cause any harm. So we want to vet all the practitioners, we vet the doctors, and we vet all those working with patients. Okay, so who's the best healer in the world? Here it is. Okay, so the, the pet therapy, so yes, so we've had, Gracie came to our chemo room twice a week for five years, and was giving these healing kisses to, to the patient while they were getting chemotherapy. Uh, never had a problem with things well, immunosuppression, but the patients usually were not immunosuppressed when they were 
on chemo, but never had a problem. And here's Gracie. Gracie then retired and now is in dog heaven. But Gracie was an amazing. And then Isabella is here. They brought her to the chemo room during Easter with her. Uh, okay. So, taking care of ourselves. So, the minion says, love yourselves. Um, applying wisdom of all healing traditions, apply what we learn from lectures, from courses, experiences. You know, we're wounded healers. So, those of us who are in medicine, we have the honor to work with everyone. And we sometimes see these amazing healers, as I said before, who not only are doing, teaching what to do, but they're applying it themselves and they're healing other people and they still get cancer and sometimes two cancers or three cancers and advanced cancers. So there are a lot of things we don't understand and that's why that paper and random mutation can be very helpful. But uh, wounded healers um, yeah, are, it, it's just something that is so much to say about that and I, I just have to move on. Sharing feelings with family, friends, medical team, understanding the challenge in the medical environment. So hopefully in the panel we can talk about this. Why is the medical system so challenged? First of all, it's not nurturing for the patients and the caregivers, but it's also not nurturing for the nurses, the doctors, and all those. Uh, finding support time, support in times of stress, helplessness that Dr. Beer got talked about. Okay, uh, so here I just want to honor Carl Simonton and David Simon, who was the co-founder of the Chopra Center. He was a neurologist and an amazing human being. Uh, and then Jeremy Geffen, I don't know if you knew of him, an integrative oncologist who also passed away of cancer and he had an amazing program that he had created throughout different um, centers in the country. So, these are all teachers and masters who are guiding us from above. Uh, so, challenge with cancer, we can do everything right and still develop cancer, children with cancer, healers with cancer, the resistant tumors, recurrent tumors, the importance of quality of life, the blessing of palliative medicine teams, and you've heard enough about the hope. Uh, to our dear patients, I'm not telling you what to do. The last thing someone that has cancer wants is to be told what to do. So, I'm honoring you and I'm not saying what to do. It's, these are just words that I want to humbly share that I've learned uh, over the years. Honor your feelings, be with those who make you feel joyful and peaceful. You are unique, do not compare yourself with others. Please accept help, you are always giving. This is a time for you to receive. Communicating with the medical team, doctors and nurses, and let's do that in the panel, the importance and how to uh, improve that communication. Doctors are burnt out, the doctors are very caring and compassionate, they're just so busy that they don't have the time and, and patients need and deserve to have the time to spend with their doctors. Uh, and see medicines and chemo's healing treatments tools to, in your healing journey. Trust your powerful inner wisdom, your intuition. Visualize your potential for infinite possibilities and healing. Message of hope, statistics are information from the past. As uh, Marius mentioned, treatments are new every year. For any condition to consider it incurable at this time, an answer may be around the corner. And miracles happen. There are books on spontaneous remission. There are books, and many of us have seen those spontaneous remissions when someone is at their deathbed and about to take their last breath. And I can give one example of a young woman with metastatic breast cancer. Uh, this is several years ago. She was going to take her last breath at home with hospice. And then things turn around, and over the weeks, turn around, over the months she was walking, and over nine months later, came to the cancer center, she said, what do we do now? And I say, you are a walking miracle, let's not even talk about what medicines to use right now. And lived another two years, and then suddenly, it was time to go. But I mean, those are the miracles that happen every day, so we can never give up. Um, so through your meditation and intuition, find those healers and teams, which include all your medical teams, with true integrity that will help you feel empowered and support you in your healing journey. And our father in medicine, Hippocrates, said, natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. So you are the, your best doctor. Okay, you get advice from us doctors, you get a, advice and recommendation, but you are your best doctor. You make your recommendations, your decisions, and you trust your intuition, and we are here honored to walk this journey with you. So for those caregivers who are here and who are listening on live stream, the caregivers uh, have such an important role. And uh, you are always helping your loved one. 
Uh, and just being present with intention, empathy and compassion, empathy and compassion, connecting multiple levels and dimensions, help them keep stressful people, people or situations away, encouraging them to be with those who make them feel at peace, as Dr. Birgo was talking about, supporting them in creating an optimal human environment, respecting beliefs and cultural differences. It's not verbal communication, uh, it's our love for them, embracing um, uncertainty, belief, and hope, and train and train and all that. What that means in training and mirror neurons, especially for us men. Men always want to have answers and want to tell our loved one, this is what you need to do because I read you have to do this and that. And ladies specifically don't need that. They need a man next to them to hold their hand and to listen. So for the, the gentlemen who are listening is the best medicine you can give to your loved one is being present and just showing them your, your love and supporting them in making their own decision because women are so wise that we cannot even understand how wise women are. And if we don't listen to them, we're in trouble because we're, it's, it's the truth. Okay, so this is the eye of God. Uh, and daily ritual, good sleep, meditation, optimizing nutrition, breathing techniques, gentle exercise, and emotion and stress. So it, sometimes it's not about doing so much, it's just about being. And that's why it's so helpful to focus on, on meditation or um, relaxing walk, being out in nature. Okay, summary, honoring your body, you need to rest, <coughs> meditation, practicing healing modalities regularly, and sometimes one or none. But don't add to your, I'm not, I don't want to add to your list of things to do. I just want you for you to know that these are all these things that you can connect with, you can read about, but ultimately you are your own healer. Um, and um, I'm, I'm grateful for, and this is St. Francis of Assisi. All right, and then I always like to show this slide of my wonderful family, my wife and two kids, who've been an inspiration to me. First, the patients have been an inspiration, but then everything I do is just having the support of the family is huge. So, um, thank you very much, and we'll be continuing the morning together.